Good afternoon, parents and student athletes, and welcome to today's webinar on antigen testing for student athletes as we begin the spring athletic season here at Alpena High School. So on March the 20th, MDHHS came out with an order that all student athletes ages 13 to 19 years old will be tested once a week for COVID-19. You must test to participate in athletics. There is no option to opt out of testing. So again, student athletes will need to be tested in order to participate in athletics this spring. One of those things that come along with testing is a new consent form and a code of conduct that parents and student athletes will need to sign in final forms. So you have to log back into final forms and complete those two uh, pages for us. Coaches will be doing daily health screenings and final forms when they take attendance. So we will continue to follow that process as we have in the fall and the winter. Results that are positive will be submitted to the MDHHS. And again, contact tracing will begin after that test is positive. Non, uh, sorry, negative tests will not be reported to MDHHS on an individual level. Only the total number of negative tests will be reported to MDHHS. So if we test 300 athletes and 295 of them come back negative, we'll be submitting 295 as a number. Then the five individuals that test positive will be submitted to the MDHHS um, and that contact tracing will begin from there. There is no cost to testing for student athletes and families. It's sponsored by MDHHS. So therefore, there is nothing to worry about there. Final forms, as we had talked about, there'll be two forms for you to go back in and complete. Those two forms will be in red on the left-hand side of your screen. And if you could complete both of those electronically, that'd be greatly appreciated. You can also visit mhsa.com under the health and safety to review more information about testing, to watch any videos that are there, and how testing will be done. It's not like it's done in the hospital. It's a quick swab, not all the way up in the nose, like it's done in the hospital or a doctor's office when you visit them. Again, this is just an example of the code of conduct that needs to be completed. And then the consent form that needs to be completed as well in order for us to test student athletes this spring. Again, all student athletes have to be tested. At the high school, how the flow will work is that we will do testing right here in D House, where my office is located. You will show up on the test day during lunch. Uh, that test will take two minutes. Uh, it won't take you long at all. You may have to wait in line a little bit, but it will not be that long. You'll be able to get to lunch, or if you choose to come down towards the end of your lunch, that would be fine as well. We'll get you tested and get you on your way. So we'll do it right here in the in our office in D House. Each sport will be assigned a day. Monday's baseball, softball. Tuesday's co-ed track. Thursday, boys golf and tennis. Friday, girls golf. However, due to spring break, next week when we come back, we're going to adjust the schedule a little bit because we need everybody to have time to go in and complete those forms. So therefore, we will be moving baseball, softball, to test on Thursday with boys golf and tennis. If we have to pull you out of class, we will. We'll try to do that during advisory, but right now we're planning to do it during lunch. And then after April the 11th, we will follow the schedule that is on your screen, uh, the schedule that I had just talked about. So please be prepared on those days to test. If you are sick, please do not come to school, stay home. That will help all of us. One of the things that came out of the order is those that are previously diagnosed with COVID-19 in the last three months and remain symptom-free <coughs> may participate in athletics without testing. If they can provide a letter from their doctor attesting that they fall into this category, it must be done by a diagnostic test, not by the antigen test. Um, but again, by di uh, diagnostic test. The flow for middle school, we'll do it in the cafe right after school on Mondays. You'll show up right after school, get tested, you'll head out to practice. 
However, that first week that we come back, just like we are at the high school, we're going to adjust testing for track, middle school track, until Thursday of that week. That would give us a few days to get student athletes in final forms, as the middle school has not been using final forms all year. So that is how the middle school flow will work. We'll get everybody in there. We'll test them on Thursday after school, and they will be on their way. A negative test, you're all set. You're ready to go. Go ahead, enjoy practice, and have fun. A positive test, you must go home immediately. Contact a family doctor to schedule a PCR test. Stay home and away for practice for 10 days. Again, if it's a positive test, you must go home immediately. Contact family doctor to schedule a PCR test. Stay home and away for practice for 10 days. Also, that will trigger contact tracing, and we'll begin that process with the guidance from the health department as we move forward. I encourage each of you to visit MHSA.com for more information. Look under the health and safety tab and you will find videos there, uh, more stuff about testing, any of the orders that are put out, any of the updates that are put out from the MHSA, those are all right there for you to view on the website. We will continue to follow the, the MHSA and the MDHHS as orders do come out. We're going to ask you to be flexible as we go through this process. We've done really good in the fall and the winter. I expect us to do the same in the spring. Um, this is new for all of us, so we're going to ask for patience. We're going to ask that you work together with us as we move forward to provide the best opportunity we can for our spring student athletes. Also in that order was a clarification on face masks. The contact sports for us here at Alpena would be girls soccer. Must wear a face mask at all times. This includes all participants, coaches, and other team personnel. Non-contact sports would be baseball, golf, softball, tennis, and track and field. Participants must wear a face mask at all times except when involved in active outdoor participation. Example, being in the game, playing first base, second base, running their event and track actively hitting the golf ball in golf, tennis, competing in a match. They would not have to wear their mask then, but all the times they would have to wear their mask. So on the sideline, uh, during coaches' pregame, uh, postgame conversations, they would need to wear a mask if we can't maintain uh, six feet social distance. So they will need to wear a mask when they're not actively participating. Please uh, be mindful of that as we move forward. However, when practices do come indoors, maybe because of weather, they will have to wear a mask at all times. So when we come inside, they will have to. Uh, we ask that masks be worn when six feet of social distance cannot be maintained. I apologize. Um, as we move forward this, there's gonna be questions. We have questions as we're trying to figure this out. Uh, we are going to provide the best opportunity we can. If you have questions, please reach out to myself or Lisa Thayer, our school nurse. We'll be glad to answer your questions. It's going to be a very good fall. It'll be a challenging, sorry, very good spring, challenging spring, but we will work on this together and we will get through this together. If you have questions, please, please reach out and have a great day. And as always, Go Wildcats.